Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip, Trip, the Empty Nest Edition. So we are in Nevada and we have about a four and a half hour drive to the Oregon border. It's a very remote place. We're gonna begin the backcountry discovery route of Oregon. Nevada and um, this is the state line of Oregon and we've been as we've been telling you for the last four weeks or so since we left home our push is to get out to the coast back to Oregon and it's for a very special reason Carol and I met here um, 25 years ago and we got married here in Oregon not quite this but Oregon's a big state we're right on the southeast corner so we still have a long ways to go to get back to where Carol was born but um, we were married in Oregon as well 25 years ago October the 10th so we're getting close to our 25th wedding anniversary and we thought it'd be super fun to return to the scene of the crime and uh, so we're gonna take you on <laughs> we're gonna take you on a journey through this incredible state uh, Oregon has what we're going through we're going to be going into right now is the desert area it has high level desert it has mountains the valley where Carol was born and raised which has you know wineries and it's green and lush and then you get out to the coast which has got the powerful waves of the Pacific Ocean so quite a lot of variety here and we hope to explore as much of it as we can and we can't wait to take you with us so where are we on the map there you go we have to go up and to here Let's go. Wow. Oh, people just parked right up here. All right, we made it to the Alvord Desert in Oregon, southeastern Oregon, and it is spectacular. It's just a huge, we're working our way down there, but it looks like it's just a huge sandy desert. It's funny because uh, when I first started coming to Oregon to see Carol, we were in kind of the rainy section, so you can get this idea, and people always say, you know, it rains so much in Oregon, um, but that's when you're seeing only a tiny little bit. When you get around and see how much is out here, I don't think it rains very much in this part of Oregon, so it's very, like I said earlier, very diverse state.
this is incredible. All right, we are here. We're in the middle of the Alvor Desert. We could camp anywhere. We might even go farther in. Behind me are the Steen Mountains. Just gorgeous. It's dead quiet out here. There's one or two other campers within oh, many, many miles. Uh, the boys would love it out here on their bikes. We'll definitely have to come back. I'm glad we took this little detour. The Alvord Desert is located in southeastern Oregon and is a 12 by 7 mile or 19 by 11 kilometer dry lake bed that averages about 7 inches or 180 millimeters of rain per year and lies at an elevation of approximately 4,000 feet or 1,200 meters. The lake is open for camping, but as always, take good care to leave it better than you found it. This morning we're just going to make a simple hot uh, scrambled eggs using the Jimmy Dean sausage and a few other ingredients. And I found this, I think it was in Steamboat, Colorado. So um, Pete really liked it. I'm excited to try it out because we love green sauces in the morning. I'm still so used to cooking for the boys and I forget that it's just Peter and I. So sometimes I have to bag or put it away in Tupperware. Some of the meat, it's just habit. I'm looking at this now going, this is enough for five people. I'm just gonna turn this off while I get the onions and jalapenos in there. Cast iron just keeps on going up in temperature before cooling down, so you just have to kind of watch that. I'm thinking of putting some of my seasoning in there, some nice salt and pepper.
This is what I've been using for the past uh, few months and I love it. And it comes in this little packet carries all of the different varieties here of different peppers and paprika salts and they're all smoked, the cold smoked and it's amazing flavor. And I like how compact it is for when you're traveling but then you get to have all this yumminess in the small package and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So here's a mesquite smoked peppercorn but it's like the perfect amount for when you're traveling. Um, and here's a maple smoked sea salt. Just gorgeous. And it adds just that touch that really makes a meal. I think I'm going to be using a hickory smoked pepper and um, some hickory salt with it just a little bit to add to the heat of the sausage. Here they are. Isn't that just adorable? I think it's the cutest thing on earth. But let's get breakfast going. So this is a toaster, as you guys know. But we bought this um, when we first went to New Zealand. That must have, that's going on eight years ago. And we still use the same one. I like this style a lot. It just compacts to nothing and it's reliable. Normally I like to add a little bit of milk to my scrambled eggs. Just makes it a nicer texture, I think. But this will do. See how it just cooks it perfectly. And since we're in Oregon, nothing like some Tillamook cheese.
these Stahn tire deflators from Kevin at Lifestyle Overland. We figured we must give them a try. They're really neat. They're preset to 18 PSI. So I haven't really used them before, but I've watched Kevin do it. And these, by the way, are available on uh, Lifestyle Overland store, overlandprovision.com. They have uh, all kinds of cool stuff like these. But let's give it a try. So theoretically that'll stop deflating at eight when the tire reaches 18 PSI. So if we end up with flat tires then they, they didn't work. So another thing he's got in his store, which is really cool, no loss tire valve cap. We're constantly losing these when we're airing up and down a lot on the trails. So the beauty of these is they uh, clip on almost like your gas cap so that uh, you don't lose them. You just thread this on and that makes it so you don't have to, you know, put them in your pocket or put them on top of the tires and forget them. And then when you're done, you got yourself a cap. It's very simple but handy idea. For those of you who know, you know. Those go missing. Got fuel and toilet paper, the important stuff. What we're gonna do is go south and get on the BDR and see how the conditions are. When you're starting the BDR, just uh, make sure you pop into fields and they have gas, diesel, propane, a nice little general store and uh, we didn't end up getting a milkshake, but they're famous for their milkshakes and burgers. So if you're hungry, we just ate a big breakfast, so we're good. But if you're hungry, uh, this is the place to be. So let's get on to the backcountry trails. So we just left the pavement and we are now on the backcountry discovery route for Oregon. It's a new, it's newly uh, released I think just this year so um, we're pretty excited to be doing it and taking you with us. Heading up uh, the first kind of very steep summit. It's kind of, it looks like loose gravel, so we've got it four long. We're just going to crawl our way up there. first section of the Oregon Backcountry Discovery Route takes you over the 6,320 foot high Domingo Pass in the West Pueblos. The 
summit. Nice view from up here. Take the paved roads down in the valley on, well, I don't know about on this side, but we've done that side. You always look up into these mountains, and I always wondered if there's any way into them, but the backcountry discovery route takes you right up and over them, so it's a neat way to see Oregon. The route then takes you on a steep descent down the other side of the mountain and into the high desert region of Oregon, also known as the Oregon Outback. The high desert is named for its generally high elevation, averaging about 4,000 feet or 1,200 meters across the region. As the day progressed, we continued to drive deeper into the high desert. We hadn't seen any signs of people all day, and we became acutely aware that we were all alone out here. It's something. I'm just gonna look around. Something just sounded weird. I'm gonna check it. Of course, we're in the most remote part of the wilderness here. I just felt like the brakes kick on or something happened and so this wire must have caught on one of the sagebrush and it pulled it out and the brakes kicked on the trailer. So I'm gonna definitely put this up a little higher so it doesn't do that again. That was a scary thing, a scary moment. All right. We've got everything more sagebrush and desert ready. Let's go. We always travel into the backcountry well prepared for any event. We carry plenty of food, water, fuel, shelter, tools, satcoms, and other supplies. But it became evident that if we were to become in need of any kind of major vehicle repairs, getting help out here would be very difficult and could take days. All right, the trail has really narrowed down. It looks more like just a wagon trail or a tractor trail. Um, just wide enough for the Jeep. So very rocky and it gets really steep up ahead. So we're gonna go back to Fort Low and crawl up that hill. This high desert is located in the southeastern part of the state and covers approximately 24,000 square miles or 62,000 square kilometers, extending approximately 200 miles or 320 kilometers from central Oregon east to the Idaho border and 130 miles or 210 kilometers south to the Nevada border. The high desert is home to the pronghorn, coyote, mule deer, black-tailed jackrabbit, and cougar. Birds common in the region include sage grouse, quail, and prairie falcon. Sagebrush, juniper, and the woolly sunflower are the region's most widespread plants. Well, 
this is a rocky, bumpy section, and we're just taking her slow. Don't want to do any damage. rough and rocky traveling guys um, we'll show you on the map when we get a chance later but there's some really rocky sections even for uh, motorcycles it'll be uh, challenging but in your uh, Jeep or whatever you're driving take it slow and uh, you'll be alright but you're just bouncing it's probably like what the wagon train that's what I'm picturing the whole entire time yeah, I know how they did that. Man, they were tough people back then. We spent some time consulting the map and plotted a trail that led over Bald Mountain toward a distant paved road on the Nevada border. With evening approaching, we began heading in that direction. pavement um, we found a trail off the BDR it goes for many many days northward um, but we uh, you know being by ourselves we decided to find pavement which was another I don't know how far off the trail it was a long ways this is a very very vast wilderness area just unbelievable it's spectacular um, but I'd probably feel better going in there with a, a tag you know with a buddy um, having the boys on their bikes or another vehicle it just feels better because you can get broken down in the middle of nowhere and you're all alone so we are now airing up we're actually right on the uh, right there is Nevada and this is Oregon 
we so we came from Nevada we went up all through the mountains and back right to the uh, state line again so we're gonna find a way from here start working our way north and in the meantime we'll, we'll see you down, down the road, road. Several thousand foot drop over here. Crazy. 